Hey everyone, it's Tasha Greer from SimpleStead.com. I'm also the author of Grow Your Own Spices, and today I am kicking off my Spice Chronicles. These are basically going to be some short videos where I talk to you about some of the spices I'm growing, um, maybe some of my adventures in growing them, and hopefully give you some information that will help you be able to grow them on your homestead or in your garden. So today I'm here with my sesame plants. Sesame is one of those kind of plants that you don't exactly know how to qualify um, because, you know, sometimes it's a seed crop that's used for oil production, but as soon as you toast sesame seeds, they have such an undeniable aroma and flavor that I consider them a spice. And the fun thing about sesame is that I first started growing it by accident. I'm an organic gardener, so when we moved to our new homestead, I knew that I needed to do some things to attract wildlife to my garden. So I started some bird um, seed plots, you know, plants that would produce seeds that the birds could eat, and also to attract some pollinators. And one of the things that came up in that plot was sesame. I didn't even know what it was, because I'd never actually seen sesame growing before, so I had to look it up. And when I found out what it was, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm growing sesame, how cool is that? And so now I actually grow it on purpose. And over here, I've got a plot of sesame. You can see all these flowers. It kind of grows a little bit like um, tobacco and also like okra. So basically, it gets flowers up at the top. Um, and these flowers, you can kind of see them here. They can get pretty tall. Uh, most of mine are just a little bit shorter than me. So uh, maybe about, I'm five foot nine. They're about my size or a little bit shorter. There's one that's kind of peeking out a little bit taller than I am. And they'll keep getting a little bit taller as long as we've got good warm weather. Um, but they will get these beautiful flowers. You can see these pink flowers on them. Sometimes they kind of get a hint of blue. Sometimes they'll be a little bit purplish. Um, pink is what I've got this year. It kind of depends on what variety you've got, what your soil is, um, you know, and, uh, and also your conditions. I got these seeds actually from uh, Monticello. So it's from their seed collection. They're trying to grow a bunch of things that Thomas Jefferson grew, and he actually brought it back to grow at his place because he thought that the oil made an even better salad dressing than olive oil, and it was something he could grow right in Virginia. Since I'm next door to Virginia, I'm in North Carolina, it also grows really well for me. So, sesame is a warm weather crop. You do need a long, hot season, but if you got 105 to 135 days of hot weather, you can get some sesame. Um, or if you don't, you could always start it indoors and transplant it. The thing about sesame, though, is it really doesn't transplant well if you accidentally disturb the roots. So you will want to pot up. Basically put it in a pot um, where the roots are not going to reach the edges, and then pot it up into your yard or into a bigger pot without ever disturbing the roots. So there's my little plot you can see, and I want to show you these seed pods. So you see the flowers. But further down, I've got maturing seed pods. So these little pods, that's where the seeds will come out of. Um, right now, they're nice and green and plump, but they will eventually start to dry, desiccate. And if you don't collect them, they will crack. And that's if you want your birds to eat them, they'll be right there for the birds to eat. Um, they'll also self-seed. So if you do want to use these in a pollinator plot or as a bird feed, they're wonderful for that. But if you want to harvest them, there's two things you could do. First, you can go down to the base of the stalk where the flowers start. There's no flowers from this point on. So right there, you can cut that off and you can dry that entire head. Or you could harvest these like okra and basically just come in here right before they're going to crack open. And you could just steal some of these pods, um, finish drying them like in a paper bag or something like that and harvest. Now I will tell you, so I've got a nice little plot here. Um, and, you know, this is going to give me pretty much what we need to, like, throw on our homemade sushi rolls, um, toss into salads, um, you know, just kind of use as a condiment, toast to throw in with some of our Asian dishes. Um, but if I wanted to make oil or something like that, I would need a much larger plot. So it's really, it's totally feasible for you to grow some, um, some spice quantities of sesame to use at home. But trying to grow your own oil crop production would be a little bit crazy unless you've got proper equipment um, and, uh, and lots and lots of space to do it. The other thing I want to tell you about sesame is how to grow it. So if you can start from seed direct in the ground, that's wonderful. Um, but you can see my soil is nice and dark down here. That's because it is loaded with compost. 
Now, sesame doesn't require a whole lot of fertilizer or anything like that, as long as it's got good organic matter. If you put compost, and I've got probably four inches in there, um, that's all it needs, and it'll grow these nice, beautiful plants. I do also want to tell you, so um, if you could do single rows there, uh, often you'll get a better result. I've done a double row here, so you can see the front plant. This guy is a multi-branching plant, um, but then you look behind, and that guy's a little bit smaller. So some of the plants got a little bit less sun because I grew them so close together. Um, now, I wanted this big impact in one of my gardens, so it was kind of a little uh, narcissism, I guess, that <laughs> led me to put my plants like this. But, um, you know, if I were trying to get really my best production, I'd make a single row. But even so, this little plant will catch up. Um, it still has multi-stems. It's got lots of, uh, of flowers. It's just a little bit later to start. Um, so it's something to think about when you're planting sesame is that they really, really need full sun. And they really do best in a single row if you can give them that space. So that is it for sesame. And I hope you guys will tune in to some more Spice Chronicles later.